Welcome to my breast implant series. This video is gonna be on preparing for implants and before and after this, I'm doing videos on my own personal experience and showing you guys so much behind the scenes footage. So down below, I will link the playlist on all the videos before and there's gonna be many videos to come on implants and so many videos on helping you figure out adulting while I'm attempting to figure it out myself. So please, please, please hit the like and subscribe button down below and turn on the bell button to be notified of my new videos and now I am not a doctor in any way shape or form but some of the things we're gonna go over are doctor recommended now the first one might seem a little bit general and you might be like oh my goodness is the rest of this video like this I promise it's not but I have to mention it and that is to eat well and yes, eating well in general and being healthy is always a good choice, but it's especially important the weeks prior to surgery. So you don't wanna be doing any crash dieting, overeating, over consuming of alcohol, because that affects your overall health and well being. And being healthier during the weeks prior is very essential to having a better, easier recovery. So make things easier for future you by being a little bit healthier now, but not going overboard. Like I said, not crash crash dieting. Don't do anything extreme, but also try to just be a little bit healthier because your body is going to thank you. And another one of my don'ts for you is don't buy anything for future you or your future size and don't also buy anything for your current size especially anything on the top so skip dresses jackets tops bras all of that do not buy it <laughs> don't think about it not even for future size because in most cases you'll be provided with a support garment or you might hear it as like a surgery bra and in most cases the surgeon's going to provide some that you're going to wear after the one you're like get out of surgery with once that comes off a lot of times they'll provide you with another one to wear after that so you're really not going to need to think about bra shopping for after surgery because that for the most part is going to be taken care of but i definitely talk to your surgeon specifically about what they provide and don't provide but you might think okay well that's you know in recovery time what if i want to start buying things for after later so i have things to wear when it's time yeah don't do it <laughs> because your size is never guaranteed. And if you're in the beginning of your journey and haven't even had your consults or anything, you might not realize that no, you do not pick your guaranteed size. Yes, in general, you're gonna go over with your surgeon and figure out what looks good on your body. Maybe you'll even try on different implant sizers or do the rice sizing to see what works on your body and get a visual idea but you're not going to know for sure. They are going to, when you get into your surgery, there's going to be multiple implants that are there and they're gonna try out different sizes based on photos you provide of what you're looking for and the conversations you have and they're gonna put them in your body to see how they specifically work with your anatomy, which they don't really fully know until you're under the knife. So your size is not going to be exactly what you might think it's going to be. And in addition to not knowing your exact size, you're also not going to know how it looks on you just because you know you're a C like come on how many people do you see that have a C that look completely different from each other so you want to see how it looks on your own body and that might determine differently what type of bra you want what type of shirt you want or jacket because it's not going to be what you might expect it to be it's going to be a little bit exciting do a little bit of pre-shopping because I want to go over what you should pick up or buy and the first thing is your medications how exciting I just told you we're going to do exciting shopping and then I tell you medications but in most cases they're gonna prescribe that to you ahead of time so you can pick it up and be ready and in addition to that in most cases they're gonna prescribe a special soap to you which might sound a little bit weird but in most cases you're gonna take a shower the night before and the morning of surgery with a special anti I can't say the word I'm blanking. I'll put it on the screen. Either way, it is a soap that is used before you go into surgery to make sure your body is clean and ready for surgery. But all the medication and kind of boring stuff aside, I would say the next thing you should pick up is entertainment. And yes, that's probably another one of those things that you think is silly. But as a person that is horrible at being sick, like when I'm sick, I go like stir crazy because I can't do the things that I'm normally doing and want to do. Like I'm a busy body. I am working way too many hours. I'm doing 
way too many things. So for me personally, I think it is so important to think about entertainment, either collecting entertainment around your house that you know you're gonna wanna do after surgery, like light things to entertain you, whether it's finding movies that you know you wanna watch or you know doing this or that, whatever it is for your entertainment. I was gonna list things, but then I totally blanked on anything else entertainment besides watching TV. But either way, either collect it or go out and buy it, whether you wanna rent a movie, whatever it is, think about this in advance so you're not trying to figure out how to entertain yourself when you're probably drugged up after a surgery and bored and you already took five naps and you want something to do think about it ahead of time now the other things you can pick up if you decide to pick up entertainment is to pick up pillows or pick out pillows around the house and collect them whatever it is you want to be prepared to be sleeping elevated and on your back it makes sense. I get it. My front is occupied and on my side. It would be disturbed. So I get that I'm supposed to sleep on my back, but I hate sleeping on my back. If you are a back sleeper, I don't understand you. We live in different worlds, okay? I really cannot comprehend sleeping on my back. I tried to practice. I couldn't do it. So the one thing to do is have pillows to be able to elevate yourself and have pillows to make sure that you can sleep on your back, whether it's putting them on the sides of you. I tried that trick because someone told me, they're like, if you want to try to sleep on your back, put pillows on each side. I tried to practice with that. I woke up hugging the pillows. I just thought it was my cuddle buddy on the side of me. Yep, um, so I learned that that's not gonna work for me and a little bit of an extra purchase I made is those like orthopedic pillow things that help you lay down on your back and stay in that position. And this is a bougie thing that you don't need, but if you have the money for it and it's in budget, you might want it. Or if you really can't sleep on your back, you might need it me included but either way i picked up those pillows they have a variety of like price um they go at i got mine off of amazon and i also figured i got it in a dark color and it might be just something i could use down the road whether it's wanting to sit in bed and watch a movie or write read or whatever it's for maybe some other uses for those pillows either way i was like it's an essential for me and it's getting delivered the day before my surgery and i'm so excited and so glad i got it i just think it's worth the money for me personally now as for more fun things ish I, I don't know, it depends on your definition of fun, but clothing and accessories you should pick up ahead of time is a front zip or button up tops and jackets because for a while, again, that limited mobility is gonna make it very hard to pull things over your head. So pulling a sweatshirt over your head or a t-shirt over your head is going to be something you're not gonna really want to do as much in the beginning. And in some cases you won't be able to do it. So have clothing that you can put on easier by being able to do it in the front, putting it over like this instead of over like this. Now, as for those are more wants, but a need is a surgery day outfit. And if you're not staying in a post-operative like surgery room afterwards, I forgot what they're called, but basically like they take care of you after surgery. If you're not staying in one of those, most likely they're not gonna provide the outfit that you wear the day of surgery. And even if you're staying overnight at one of those places, they still might not provide it. It just depends. If you are traveling to another state or another country, a lot of times they do provide a lot of these things for you. But if you're doing it locally, most likely you're going to need to get your own surgery day outfit. And for my recommendation from my like basically like preparation nurse. I don't know what her technical title is, but she just kept, told me all the things to be prepared for, gave me a folder with a lot of information. She said for a surgery day outfit, the things that you should remember is dark, baggy, and opens in the front. So dark is because you might not think about it, but one, there you are going to be bleeding, but you are gonna be bandaged. So in most cases, it's not blood, but some of the like chemicals they use in the surgery area can stain your clothing. So I was warned like dark clothing if you don't want it stained, and also dark clothing because even if you don't care if it gets stained, it's kind of like, you feel better if you're wearing something that you don't see all these stains and blotches, just like wear a dark color. And then you want it to be baggy because what you're walking in with is what you're walking out in, in most cases. So you need something that's gonna fit you in the beginning, but you also need something that's gonna fit you after implants. And in addition to your implant size, you're also gonna have your bandages, which are a lot bigger than the bras you're gonna be wearing down the road for recovery. At this point, you're gonna be really big, and then later on, they're gonna take more of that off. So you need something that's baggy enough to accommodate implants and accommodate bandages. And the next thing you most definitely probably have not thought about, but piercings. If you have any of these bad boys, these bad boys, or any bad boys all over your body, 
there's something I have to tell you that I legitimately did not read in one article, one video. I didn't hear one person talk about it, including my surgeon. But also it was brought up in later conversations. But either way, in the beginning, it wasn't something I had thought about. And some of those things, I guess maybe people just assume that people know. And maybe some people do know, maybe you did know. But in most cases, when you're getting your boobs done, you can't walk in there with metal. Because one of the tools they use, something to do with it makes so you can't have metals. I can't remember she explained it to me, but either way, that means I can't have any metals. No metals, all have to be off my body. And I was like, oh crap, does that mean I just have to take out my piercings? And like, some of my piercings are old enough, some of yours might be old enough where you could take it out for a couple hours and it won't close, but it's gonna be painful to put it back in. But a workaround from that is most most surgeons or your prep nurse will tell you that you can wear like plastic rubber jewelry or retainers or sometimes what they're called and you can wear those and then they'll be taped down on surgery and potentially the day of or the next day you can put your metal ones back in but either way it is not something I thought about. So I have to go out and shop and buy the rubber ones because I just don't want my piercings out for that long. Now, if you have any piercings here, I had my nipples pierced, you may or may not be able to keep them. So personally, I wasn't able to keep my nipple piercing. I just had one at that point. One was closed, one was I still had in. I had to take it out because of the risk of infection. So depending on what your surgeon is okay with, not okay with, whatever's going on with your specific body, you may or may not be able to keep your nipple piercings. So bring up that conversation in advance. So some people aren't able to keep them because there'll be too much stretching and it won't really be good on the piercing. Some people there's a risk of infection, which mine it was because it was an old piercing, but it kept like rejecting. So it wasn't fully healed right. And there was a risk of infection. And also I have to wait a few months before I'm able to get re-pierced because again, they don't want the risk of an infection happening, you know, new bacteria coming into that area. So you will have to wait a little bit. If you end up having to take yours out, you'll have to wait a little bit before having to put them back in. And in general, I feel like during recovery, if you have those pierce, you might want to just take them out. Just take the loss and take them out because I imagine that it won't be very comfortable because there's a lot of stretching going on. Now, this is another one of the things that might not apply to everyone, but if you smoke of any sort, now I'm not gonna start listing things because I don't wanna be demonetized on this video, but either way, if you smoke, you have to stop four weeks prior to surgery. That's the longest prior that was on my list of things you can't do prior. Like other things, you have to stop two weeks before, but this one, you have to stop four weeks before. And that includes if you do nicotine gum, patches, anything like that, or even any THC based products, you have to stop four weeks before surgery. And you also have to stay away from secondhand smoke. So if someone's smoking, walk away because your healing and health depends heavily on this. Like this was put in bold all over my prep sheets and all over everything I found online. So don't even be around secondhand smoke. For some reason, this impairs the healing process so much. So just follow what your doctor says, follow what your surgeon says, and and most likely, I can't imagine your surgeon not telling you the whole stay away from smoking of any sort, including secondhand smoke, including things that you might not think of as smoking four weeks prior to surgery. Now, the things you have to stop two weeks prior to surgery are a lot of over-the-counter meds, vitamins, diet stuff. So everything from Advil to maybe your vitamin you take every day might be on this giant list of things you can not take two weeks prior to surgery. And you also have to stop all hormonal based products, including your birth control. <laughs> now you might not think of that, but most birth controls are hormonal. I currently have an IUD that is non-hormonal, but any hormonal based products, talk to your doctor, but in most cases you have to stop them two weeks prior to surgery. So you're gonna have to either find an alternative method or go off birth control for two weeks. Now this one is a little bit of a light one to end with, but it is to take advantage of doing things before surgery. And yes, I mean, have fun, do things beforehand that you won't be able to do for a little bit after surgery because you're gonna have that recovery window. Take that hike because it's gonna be three weeks before you can. Do whatever it is, but I also mean do the not so fun things you might have to do. So if you have to do something that is strenuous or involves something heavy or you need to fix something around the house, whatever it is, getting the case of water out of your car, all these little things you should do before surgery, make things a little bit easier for yourself so you don't have to find someone else to do it or to just skip it all together. 
and other things to make things a little bit easier for yourself or prepping food, doing laundry, cleaning your whole entire place, make things a better, easier environment for you when you get out of surgery, especially things like prepping food and cleaning. It's like, I'm not going to want to do that when I get out of surgery or for a while. Some things I won't even be able to do. Like you're on bed rest for the first day or potentially longer. You're not even able to drive for until you get cleared. So it's just like, keep in mind for all these things. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you want more information on preparing and what the process is like again watch those other videos like I had the guts to ask my surgeon to film stuff and to have him on camera and to get a lot of this and blur my nipples out of so many pieces of footage so please take advantage of it and watch all those videos and please 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 hit the like and subscribe button down below I would love for you to join on the journey for a new video every single Wednesday and I hope you have a great rest of your morning evening night whatever it is for you I'll see you Wednesday